This episode of Comics for Fun and Profit is brought to you by our YouTube channel. Yes, we have a growing YouTube channel. We need likes and subscribes. Go to YouTube, check out Comics for Fun and Profit. Just search Comics for Fun and Profit. Or you can go to beacons.ai slash comicsfunprofit and find all our links, including our, our YouTube, and get there that way. Got about 600 plus of our episodes in there so far. Check them out at your leisure. We've got some playlists segmented, so all of our guest host episodes are on a playlist. All of our interview episodes by Jason are on a playlist. We're going to continue to go back in time and continue to add to those for you completists out there that want to listen to all of Comics for Fun and Profits history, because they're gone. They're gone from Apple Podcasts. They're gone from Stitchers of the World. They have dropped off. I have them on a hard drive somewhere, and we'll get them archived onto YouTube for posterity. So when Kyle and I pass off this mortal coil, you know, Google and YouTube ain't going nowhere. Our stuff will always be around. Please, please, I implore you. Even if you don't like YouTube or you don't like listening to podcasts on YouTube, I get it. But you like us, or you wouldn't be listening to this. Go to YouTube, like, subscribe. So we don't have there very many. We just started it. So we just started adding episodes. Would love your support in any way you can. Thank you. In a world ravaged by war and chaos, a group of survivors must band together to brave the dangers of a post-apocalyptic landscape. The year is 2000, and the world has been plunged into darkness. The nuclear fires have burned out, leaving behind a wasteland of ruins and radiation. But amidst the rubble and despair, a glimmer of hope still remains. Join Dork Day Afternoon as they face off against marauding gangs, enemy soldiers, and even the harsh elements themselves in the world of Twilight 2000. Will our heroes survive the challenges ahead? Can they keep their own humanity intact? Or will they succumb to the harsh realities of life after the end of the world? Two Past Midnight, an actual play podcast by Dork Day Afternoon. You're listening to Comics for Fun and Profit. This is Kyle and Drew with your sneak peek. And next week, episode number 934 for comics originally releasing uh, August the 27th and August. Dang it, I'm not doing no. it anymore. I keep saying no. it. We're, August 28th. Books come out on Wednesdays. Comics are good. See you on Wednesday. August 28th. 2024. But before Drew and I get into what's coming up in your local comic book shops this coming Wednesday. How are we doing, buddy? Doing pretty good. Um, as you probably heard, if I edited this properly, not not if you're a patron who doesn't have to listen to ads, but um, for the rest of you folks, um, I probably put my YouTube ad um, on the beginning of this show. And I just want to remind you that the ad you just heard two seconds ago that, <laughs> yes, <laughs> Comics for Fun and Profit has a YouTube channel. And it used to be a pathetic, sad, paltry little channel of a handful of videos. And we now are up to over 600 of our episodes are now archived on YouTube, um, which is more than is on uh, the, the Apple Podcasts, because I think they cap you at whatever they cap you at. So um, it goes all the way back. We're not we don't have. Every single what, what episode are we on 934? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I don't have all 900 episodes up there yet, but um, two thirds of the way. Absolutely. And and um, we just kind of started talking about it. We're trying to get subscribers. We only have 24 subscribers right now. Oh, so come on. We need to do better than that, folks. Um, we need to get to triple digits. Um, for respectability, if nothing else. Yeah. And and by golly, if we get to 500, I think I can turn on the monetization, which would be nice. Um, there we go. But uh, we just want we want some subscribers. We want um, folks to, to stumble across it and see it and share it and like it and all that good stuff. Um, one of our, you can probably guess what our 
you might be able to guess what our most popular episode is. I would say, is it one of the interviews? It's one of the interviews. Jason holds the top two spots, actually. Ah, uh, I knew it. Could have seen it that is, coming. It, the Ed Pisker is 600 plus views on that one. And the Kelly Thompson interview is nice. number two with 115. Um, so, and then some random episode 722 when we talk about the DC's round robin tournament um, <laughs> is is ranked three. I uh, would have hit some uh, some buzzwords. Must have. And then uh, the Avengers Endgame uh, spoiler cast. That we ah, did. there we go. Yeah, that, that's in fourth place. So no no rhyme or reason, real really. Um, and some of these have been up for a while. Um, because we because the Ed Pisker interview was why I started it because I was like mm-hmm. more people more people need to need to listen to this. It's so good. Um, and it's just taken me a while to figure out how to get audio onto youtube there you go. um you gotta you gotta and then you got some. pictures and stuff too you so i mean you're doing some you're doing some work yeah 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 so we got 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 some change i'm changing out the thumbnails um and trying to make them tie into the episodes and uh yeah it it's fun it's fun and the best part is when i'm dead and gone there you go. And Kyle, Kyle doesn't know how to do podcasts on his own. Uh, so, so, so the podcast is probably done at that point, um, if not before, if I don't stroke out. But anyway, then there's an archive of this, of us forever and ever, for all eternity. You can tune in and your children's children can tune in um, because otherwise our server will shut off at some point because I nobody will be around to pay it. So it'll yeah. just die. So. Yeah. This is a, a way to um, archive all those episodes for ever. There we go. Uh, my uh, other podcast, my Dork Day Afternoon podcast, 309 subscribers. So let's see if we can uh, get oh, above the other podcast. Crushing. You're crushing. Yeah. Man. And the, the, the top video for them, it's our Walking Dead Session Zero, 851 views. Now that's cool. So we have goals. We have goals to to knock to to knock the other podcast out. I thought I'll pin, the Walking I'll pin my two children against each other in a knife fight. <laughs> I thought the Walking Dead would be popular. Does it make you guys want to play it more, or did you not have any fun? No, it was bla- it was a blast. We're, I'm so deep into the Two Past Midnight that I, I I couldn't even think about doing something other than those characters at the moment. But you've been playing for three years. Yeah, quite a bit. Is, is it and it's been two past midnight and twilight 2000 for two for three years the same game or uh, new, two, new our campaign? two past midnight campaign is on 112 episodes wow that's pretty cool that's very cool yeah and that's they can find that dork day afternoon right yep dork day afternoon and we're at like we're comics for fun and profit i think and yep. we're with all our beacons links um so <laughs> Uh, please check, 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 check that out. And what are we doing first, Kyle? Oh, we're going to do like we always do. Drew, what do we always do first? We're going to go over to our good friends at comicbookinvest.com. No, see, no, no. no, they didn't. They didn't put the new new thing up. That's so it's right. Our, it's our Actually, friends at yeah. Cover Price. Um, in 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 like in the transition between you saying they didn't put it up, it's up. Oh, it's now up. Okay, it's now up. Gotcha. So you want to head on over to CBSI with me, Drew? Head over to uh, comicbookinvest.com. Yeah, we can do that. We can do that. Look at their hot 10 items. They're items that will be raging across the screen. And we're going to start where we always start. Because I say that because it's where we started last week. Transformers number 11, one per store variant. Ultra Magnus. Hanging around the top stop for a relatively slow week. Still averaging more than $80 and over 70 sales. And and seen a few, a few around 100 bucks. That's Very pretty nice. good. Dope looking cover. Wolverine Revenge, Red Band Edition number one, the one in 25 is our number two book. New this week, Blood Hunt may be over, but we have another EC horror homage on a Red Band Edition as the first issue of Wolverine Revenge has dropped. This awesome homage to Tales of the Crypt 39 has rebounded from the soft sales of the last Blood Hunt homage with a $50 average on 30 or more sales. The highest 70 is still well below the early highs of the other Blood Hunt homages, but that 
is to be expected as the gimmick is not as fresh anymore. At rank three, we have the unbelievable Gwenpool. Number one, I'm always surprised when a video game skin release drives comic sales. But that <laughs> is do. what appears to have happened as Gwenpool was released as a Fortnite skin. And my kids are well into the Fortniting right now. If you hear some hiccups in my voice, it's because I'm podcasting early and I have two children currently uh, Fortniting up a storm. So stealing all you of my You did not hair. shut them off? You did not shut them off for us? I did not. I went, well, we went early. Normally, if it's it's close to the shutoff time, I can I can take a hard line stance. Okay. Uh, I have gotcha. not. I apologize. So I've sacrificed my podcasting nature for a few <laughs> fatherhood points. <laughs> Oftentimes, when normies get involved in our hobby, they target the affordable books at the number one most of the times. They don't care about our uh, our semantics over true first appearances. There's something purist about that. It is. Yes. That said, this still went from cover price last week to a $20 book with over 50 sales for Gwen Pool number one. Something is killing the children, number one. Oh, snap, we're going back in time with my boy JT4. It's been a while since we've seen this book on the list after a script tease where we all are reminded the Netflix show is still on the way for this property. It triggered a delayed rebound in pricing. Rawls have reached $515 this past week, while CGC 9.8s are 825 again. No. Not near its all-time highs. No way. Yeah. But definitely up from the lulls in the market when this was only a $500 9.8 book. Not that darn long ago. Don't you have some of these? I think I do. I think or, I was one of the few people. Would you rather have $500? Yeah, yeah, I think I might. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think I might. Time to get back in the selling. Get back in the selling. Oh At rank five, crossed style. zero. All crossed is what? on the list, Drew. Crossed what? is on the list. As one of two of my biggest crossed people in my life. Crossed is on the list, my friend. Who's the other person? Who's the other cross person? Uh, my good friend Chris, a pastor friend of mine from Kentucky that I grew up with. Pastors and crossed. Yeah, I know. It's crazy. What? It's crazy. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Movie rumors have spiked one of the most violent comics out there. It will be interesting to see the tone of this project once it's complete. But with the popularity of Ennis's other over-the-top extreme properties that have been adapted like Preacher and The Boys, this could be a hit. Multiple covers of this zero issue, but cover A, Rawls are hitting $60 this week, and a CGC 9.4 even hit $215. Bucks. Huh. That's awesome. Yeah. So Crossed lives again. I don't know that I want a movie. I, I want a series of like for 10 seasons okay and if you could pick your network oh my goodness um hbo I max guess, like yeah it's gotta be max netflix? i guess no not no hulu definitely not amazon, amazon prime no. amazon prime just did good with our boys of fallout that's true but they didn't do well with why oh was that them yeah that was them too I thought that was sci-fi or something stupid. No, they were. They that was Amazon. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Well, we'll see. I yeah, I forgot. Fallout was freaking great. So, mm -hmm. but not a comic. So HBO Max is your is your is your propri is your yeah. want. Yeah, I would go HBO Max. Yeah. Very cool. At rank five, we have Marvel superheroes: Secret Wars eight. Black Suit Spider-Man. This book has been selling well for ages now, but period periodic surges put it out on these lists every so often. Now, with Venom 3 rumors being the catalyst for Tom Holland's Peter Parker to get his Black Suit symbiote, we are seeing a rise in all the usual suspect Black Suit Spidey books, this being the best. This cover favorite has more than 100 sales this week, Drew, which is a 20% wow. increase over last week's volumes. High grades of Rawls are still over $200, while the standout sale this week has to be a, C a, a CGC 9.8 Mark Jewelers edition that hit 7K, homie. Yeah. We got this book at a quarter sales at one point in time. No, we, we got. We, I thought we, you filled a whole run at one point at a at a at a back back end stuff. Maybe there was like a beat up eight, but I yeah. don't think I don't think pristine 100%. eights were in a quarter. No, not pristine, but like, yeah, yeah, cray cray. At rank seven, Amazing Spider-Man 194. My boy Walt Marv Wolfman writing this Al Migron cover. More rumors of Sidney Sweeney eyeing the black cat in the MCU. <laughs> 
has spawned renewed interest in the book. While I admit it's near perfect casting, we must remember it's only a rumor for now. That said, we've seen volumes rise with over 30 sales of fine and very fine copies and getting $180. A CGC 9.6 even went for 800 bucks. Are we going to allow her to uh, do yes. another MCU? She can do yeah. what she wants. Did you see the Instagram boat pics? She, she can play whatever she wants. I did not see the Instagram boat pics. Gotcha. At rank eight, something is killing the children. Number one, FOC edition from yours and my good friend, Jenny Frizen. I know this was already in the list above, and there are a ton of later printings, including an upcoming archive edition. But in particular, after cover A, this FOC virgin Jenny Frizen cover has been seeing some action as of late. Rawls are up to 100 bucks with CGC 9.8s hitting $175. A far cry from what cover A is, but still an increase over recent sales. Hmm. At rank nine, Blood Hunt number five, the one in 25 Kale New cover. Returning to the list after a lull in sales last week, it seems the rush of Doom is not over. Granted, this is more comic related than Doom as the new source for Supreme, as opposed to all the Robert Downey Jr. hype for the MCU. That being said, with over a dozen sales this week, the price has risen from the $40 it was a couple weeks back to a new $60 average. Yes. And at rank 10, X-Men number two, one in 100, J. Scott Campbell version. Your boy. My boy. A new release this week with a high ratio variant. One might say we should be, surpri- we should be surprised AJSC variant is selling at a premium, but with issue one also featuring a Psylocke by J. Scott Campbell. The recent heat on this Magic M-A-G-I-K cover is a case of less than issue number twos or more just fans of Magic. Either way, it's a one in a hundred is averaging a touch above ratio at 120 and almost 20 sales with a reach of 150. But Drew and I do not care about that until it is double ratio, correct? <laughs> exactly. That is but our Mendoza line. Excuse me. That, that, that's the line. That is the line. Walt Disney Comics Stories, number one. Another notable sale we'd like to look at. Disney Classic showing impressive gains as a CGC 4.5 sold for $6,900. That's a pretty, pretty solid increase from the last sale back in 2022 for five grand. While Donald Duck and the cover feature here, the guts of this one feature the start of Mickey on the title. Okay. That's a 10 center. Disney, I get it. And the other notable sale, Harvey Kurtzman writer and artist on mad number one not mad magazine but mag mad another classic non-superhero comic making waves that's about a cgc 8.5 so for just over nine thousand dollars this week a big jump from the last sale in 2023 of six thousand and five hundred bucks i mean would you have even picked this up in a dollar bin mad number one not would a you, chance. Would you even looked at that and thought anything about it? I would have just assumed it's a it's a big raw dump. Oh, yeah. dude, I saw so um I get caught up in the aggregate a lot for uh, TikTok um for like Pokemon cards and baseball cards lately. Okay. Um, and you know the big trend is grading. You know, you know Beckett tens and and PGS tens and all that stuff. You know, with the grading. And uh, they were making fun of CGC in the uh, the card grading world as the the lesser being. Wow. Yeah, because one guy put down a, a CGC and he's like CGC. Ah, and he just kind of tossed it back at him, and I just giggled. And going through the comments, people were just like, Yeah, CGC just doesn't move as well as the the big dogs. Wow. And I was like, that's oh, hilarious. they're just they're not they're not they're not the kings in the the card world, which is the so newest. So Beckett is the is the premium. Um. I don't think it's Beckett. I th- it's something else. Okay. Yeah. Very cool. Did not know that. Yeah, but I just thought it was cool that they're, they're still in that world because, like, their banner looks about the, th- the same. But uh, but they are not the uh, the number one market share. No, it is. Who is the mar- the big dog? Um, PSA. PSA is the big dog. PSA. Okay. PSA 10 is the big thing. And then with cards, you know, it's a lot on centering and cut and corners and stuff. Yeah. So, like, grading things is so much simpler. There's not much – there's not as meticulous things as you're getting with comics where you're 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 not – you know, a lot of times you're being able to know what you're getting in that. It's, it's, uh, it seems to be even a simpler process. I mean, you obviously get surprised every now and again with a 10 being a 9 and stuff. But – and then but yeah, when you have – when you buy the, the baseball signature cards – 
yeah. they actually grade both the signature and the card separately on the card. So oh, you get like a nice. 9.5 out of the signature and a 10 out of the card. That's kind of cool. Kind of neat being able to kind of just dip into those worlds and look at them a little bit as uh, the worlds of collectible cards is on friggin' fire right now. It's crazy. Even like baseball cards. Ba- yeah, baseball, football. Because now they're starting to individually numbering and like people are paying $10,000 for packs of cards. Jeepers. And they're doing all the jersey cuts and stuff and then the signatures and everything. And it's, Like it's, a piece of a jersey in the card? Yeah. Dude, there oh, was this wow. dope ba- Big Ben, Ben Roethlisberger card. It was a horizontal card. And they cut the Nike swoosh out of two of the, his jerseys and patched them into the card. It was really cool. Wow. And yeah. that's worth how much? It was like three grand or something weird. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> But, you know, all my cards from the 80s were mm-hmm. bubkus. Bubkus. Somebody's got to be looking for some old Rod Carews. Come on now. Ah, man. Where, what about your Jose Canseco's? Yeah, and I got I got some old, like, Shaq rookies and stuff that I got to dig out, but you just never know. I all mean, the, sh- the basketball cards might be okay. Yeah, it's weird because, like, I have the old Griffey rookies and stuff that, that like, caught fire. It's just, I, I got I to gotta maybe circle back on that. Yeah, for sure. Speaking of circling back, let's hey, circle back. Let's circle let's over, head over to our good friends at previews. Look at Marvel's previews. We're September for November, Drew. Let's look at some comics that are reminding us to have turkey together. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. Yep, and we're going to start with the eight deaths of Spider-Man. While a cat has nine lives, a spider has eight deaths. I just made that up. That's not no. Marvel saying that. That wasn't. I like that. Avengers disassembled is the. Uh, Disney cover with uh, uh, good old Goofy on the front. All right. Uh, what if they were the, the Avengers? And I bet you yeah. that sells pretty well. I bet you too. Yeah. A little Hawkeye Donald Duck. With the old oh. plunger arrow. I like it. But we start with Amazing Spider-Man 61. Joe Kelly had McGinnis on this. The eight deaths of Spider-Man begins. The world has changed. Dr. Doom is Sorcerer Supreme, but he has no plans to spend his time like his predecessor. So this is um, Zeb Wells is out and Joe Kelly is in. And we're doing Ed McGinnis on this art. Yep. Um, And uh, we'll see how it goes. And we like Joe Kelly because he was the Deadpool guy. Yeah, in my mind, Joe Kelly is the one that created the Deadpool that we know and love now. The fourth wall breaking, the humor, the aspect of him. He is like what Chris Claremont did for the X-Men, Joe Kelly did for Deadpool. In my mind. I may be wrong in that, but that's my opinion. Yes, you're allowed. And we get double shipped. We get Amazing Spider-Man. 62. The eight deaths of Spider-Man continues. Spider-Man, one death down, faces the next scion of... Okay, Drew, how would you say this word? C-Y-T-T-O-R-A-K. Sidorak? Sidorak? Sidorak. Sidorak. That's right. The God Spider faces in the patron of Juggernaut. All right. They're getting deep with this. Let's see if we can follow. Yeah. Avengers versus Alien. I'm sorry. Aliens versus Avengers two of four. This cool. This is the one you said that they were going to be uh, destroyed in like two seconds. Yeah. I don't understand how in any way, shape or form, any number of (laughs) Xenomorphs stands a chance versus the Hulk. So, (laughs) okay. Or even Iron Man. Or Iron Iron Man Man would just, oh, look. Each one gets a bullet in the head. (laughs) Drew, a title that's very near and dear to your heart. West Coast Avengers, number one. Jerry Duggan bringing it back. Uh, Danny Kim on art. Art Germ rocking some dope Spider-Woman covers. All kinds of really cool stuff. Ultron Returns. Redeem? Iron Man and War Machine have put together a new team of Avengers, one that includes villains seeking a path of redemption. Their case study, Ultron, who against all odds seems to be walking the straight and narrow for now. But does the success of one guarantee the success of all? Spider-Woman and Firestar have their doubts. 
And can any amount of heroics really absolve Ultron of his past? Okay, West Coast is, Avengers number one. This is a terrible team. Mm-hmm. I hate it. Mm-hmm. First of all, no Hawkeye. No Hawkeye. No Moon Knight. No Moon Knight. No Tigra. I mean... Not your brothers, West Coast Avengers. No, this is not my West Coast... This is a terrible lineup. And what is this with Ultron being on the team? That makes no sense. That being said, I'll probably read it. Um, (laughs) (laughs) So... So you've essentially got three of the same character. You've got Iron Man, War Machine, and Ultron. Aren't they fairly similar? (laughs) Very similar. And then you put a couple of chicks on the end uh, for balance, I guess. And then you got Jerry Duggan doing the writing. <sighs> so scale of one to ten, hype scale, Drew. When when I saw the top where it said West Coast Avengers, my hype scale was six ten. to midnight. Gotcha. I was excited, and then yeah. I scrolled down, and I'm like, what? And then what? Uh... That being said, Drew is committed to reading three of them. I'll read one. I'll read one for sure. <laughs> we go. Iron Man 2, Spencer Ackerman, Julius Ota with the second issue of Iron Man, Man vs. Monger. Blade, Red Band, number two, Brian Hill, CF Villa. These might be interested in checking out because we don't know what the the future of Blade is because, uh, you know, we got a, a touch mm-hmm. of Blade in, in our good right. friend Deadpool, and uh, we've got yet another delay in the Deadpool reboot. So, who knows? Yeah. But we do know Moon Knight is the Fist of Khonshu, and issue two is coming up. Who the hell is the guy with an eight ball for a hat? Yeah, that's eight ball. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, his name is eight ball, and he was um, a weak ass character. Is he just a cokehead that, coke that wears a mask? <laughs> no, he he actually he had some he had a good arc uh in in the last where they killed off Mark Spector. He was he was pretty good character, so kind of redeemed himself a little bit. Um but yeah, he was a dumb character for the longest time, but now he's now he's better. There we go. Kahori, reshaper of worlds number one. The breakout character from Disney Plus's What If shows her comics debut. The Mohawk warrior Kahori fell into Sky World and into our hearts from first appearances fighting invaders to her home. She's already helped save all of reality from a demented Doctor Strange and secured peace in her own world. So now what? Did you finish What If? No, I hated it. Yeah, I didn't like it either. Um, I never finished it. And so I don't know who this breakout character is. Yeah. I immediately thought it was Pocahontas from the Disney yeah. show. No, yep. My apologies. And back into more what ifs. Marvel and Disney. What if Minnie became Captain Marvel? <sighs> what if? Okay. Wouldn't that be great? Okay. But we do get a Peach Momoko Minnie Captain Marvel cover. It is friggin' adorable. Better than nothing. That being said, I don't know why we need this. Incredible Hulk 19, celebrating a Hulk size issue 800. So, of course, Hulk 19 is Legacy 800, which means what, Drew? Uh, $7 gotta dollar the, buck. Yeah, I got to put some uh, extra dollar signs on that one. That's right. Wolverine number th- three by Salamed Ahmed, or Saladin Ahmed. Nice cover by Martin Cosino. Cosolo. I am bad with names today and every other day. Department H goes hunting. Psylocke number one. Alyssa Wong and Vincenzo Carata on it. And, of course, I'm excited by the Art Germ cover. Very cool looking cover. She was made for violence. Why do we have to um, inquire regarding foil pricing? <laughs> yeah, normally, that not that just like a dollar or two? It, why, why are we inquiring? I don't I don't understand. How how do you not know yeah, how much I it mean, costed? This is this is your your order guide. You should uh you should have prices available. Please inquire. We don't really know how much foil costs anymore. There's been a, a rush on foil. Yeah. Blame it on COVID. I wonder if it has to do anything with the recycling market. Whatever, you know, tin is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So the scrap market is down so yes. or up, so it's hard to get the, the foil one. <laughs> That'd be fun if it was just like seafood. It was like market price. Yeah. 
Yeah. X Factor number four from Aunt Mark Russell. Beneath the surface, don't ever care about my X Factor storm number two. Uh, the first Ayo. issue, first of all, Kyle. Well, the okay. first issue of X Factor was really great. Mark really Russell's great. got it dialed in. He's good. He he sucked me in, and I like it. So don't not apologize. Um, four was cover does not interest me, but apparently one dope as it can. Be. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for, the cover doesn't look great. Yeah. Storm number two. Who's the writer on Storm number two? Oh, you're doing this to me. Murewa, Murewa, Adele. I, oh my gosh, Kylie, did you just have a stroke? I did. Are you okay? Are my you tongue okay? is currently inverted, and I'm joking. Murewa, I won't die. Adele, It's one of those things you say with your tongue at the bottom of your throat. And the variant cover by Ejiwa Edge Ebenebe. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. And What's your name? Arnanza Souza. <laughs> and Mateus Manhinanini. I am I'm oh going to butcher goodness. them all because I'm here. A lot of uh, an international uh, yes. creative team. <laughs> yes. Mystique number two of five by Declan Shalvey. I got that down. Yep. Cover by David Lopez. Two for two. Yeah, there you go. Sentinels 2 of 5. Dazzler 3 of a 4 issue series, but since somebody didn't play Dazzler, I no longer care. <laughs> Nobody cares. Nobody cares. <laughs> X-Force 5. Next. Exceptional X-Men number 3. Emma Frost versus Kitty Pride. NYX number five, Colin Kelly and Jackson Lansing writing that one. Phoenix number five, Stephanie Phillips. This continues to be an ongoing, uh, it's more than I thought it would be, Life Incarnate versus Energy Infinite. Gene Gray taking on some guy I don't know. Hercules. Uncanny X-Men five, Gail Simone writing that one. Uncanny X-Men six, double shipped. Back to school for four young mutants. I like the school time stuff. X-Men 7, Jed McKay writing that one. Joel Jones giving us a Psylocke variant, so that's exciting. Okay, Drew, didn't see this coming. Negasonic Teenage Warhead number one. Oh. Of course, Negasonic, the uh, the back shelf character that the OG Deadpool movie used uh, from the uh, X-Men license, as they said in there, because it was cheap and easy. You remember so. the actress um, Ruby Rose who played Catwoman for a little while on the the DC show? That yeah, got yeah, yeah. Canceled. Yeah. It looks that's that's who that looks like. There you like, go. That's who Negasonic looks like on the cover here. Very cool. Ellie Fimster is under arrest when the time when the TVA accuses Negasonic Teenage Warhead of a crime she has yet to commit. She'll have to go on the run to stop herself before the TVA does. It all comes down to a single moment in time, a choice future Ellie must face. Which means now Ellie has one hour to find Yuki, her girlfriend from the future, who she's never met, kiss her, and save the multiverse, Drew. God, I hate everything about that. That entire entire synopsis sounds awful. Gotcha. By the way, this is collecting the hit web series, Negasonic Warhead 44 through 49. So this story has already been told. Gotcha. Gotcha. Also, it's $7. So Uh, for what I was like, oh, this is cool. There's zero reason to do this now. Never mind. Yeah. Gotcha. And ultimate Venom War, Venom War 4 of 5. Venom versus the Zombiots. So much Venom. Venom 5 of 5. So we're getting penultimate and finale, both in the same one. Venom War, Deadpool, three of three. So the Venom War with Deadpool is over. Venom War, Lethal Protectors, three of three. The Sabir Perza written one is on its way out as well. Venom Wars, it's Jeff, number one. So the little children's shark. It's Venom Wars. Yeah. All right. Venom Wars, Wolverine, three of three, as that one ends. Venom War, Spider-Man, number four, Colin or Colin Kelly and Jackson Lansing again. That one's ending. Venom 39 by Torn and Grombeck. Venom Time Quest coming to an end. 
Drew, you, uh, you put out a, a post on our Facebook that you were down to only one Ultimates book now. Yes, just Spider-Man now. There we go. And I believe Ultimate uh, Black Panther 10. Rock put took me to task, or one of our listeners took me to task and said uh, he was all in still. So I was there we missing go. out. I was missing out. So your mileage may vary. Yes. Um, Ultimate Spider-Man 11. Ultimate X-Men 9. Ultimates 6. But that's all our Ultimates at the moment. Werewolf oh. by Night Red Band 4 is a really nice cover. Is that an EM Guest cover? Oh, yeah. A, yep. Really good. That's a good cover. Wolverine Revenge, four of five. And that it has a red band trailer, a, a red band cover as well. Ultraman Cross Avengers, four of four, as it winds down. Creepy, I had no, creepy. Go ahead. I, I'm sorry, I had no interest in this, but I didn't realize Kyle Higgins was writing it. Mm hmm. Dang. Oops. <laughs> Ultraman Cross Avengers, four of four. If finishing up, the, like you said, our boy Kyle Higgins. Predator versus Black Panther four. Uh, that one's uh, winding down. Very. You'd also have on the front. no chance against Black Panther. <laughs> <laughs> I completely agree. I completely agree. Amazing Spider-Man two sixty two facsimile. I remember this cover, and this cover was everywhere. You could, and that's the photo. Could, that was like one of the first photo covers, kind of. One of the know. first photo covers. It was, um, yeah, this was everywhere. This was not an expensive book. So why do we need a facsimile for? But now it's uh, five bucks. Yeah. The iconic photograph cover. It says ads and all. We are on 11 of 12 for Marvel Superheroes Secret Wars Facsimile Edition. As it's $5. Um, Almost done. Facsimile. <laughs> Web of Spider-Man in 32 Facsimile Edition. That's a good that cover. Cool one? Yeah. From the 1985 Here Lies Spider-Man cover. Yeah, J.M. Demetrius. Uh, and then we got some uh, Homeroom Heroes 2 Kitty Stuff. Why would you stick all age stuff right in the middle of that? That doesn't make just sense. wedge, just wedge it in there. Just, yeah, that's so stupid. Miles Morales, Spider Man twenty six, all new, all different Spider Man suit. So we have a pink suit for okay, Miles Morales. Fine. Spider Man Reign two of five. Two, I'm sorry, Spider Man Reign two, issue five of five. Spider Gwen, Ghost Spider seven. Shouldn't Spider Gwen and Gwen Poole have a team up book? Yeah. Shouldn't they? I think so. Yeah, I completely I mean, agree. What? Why haven't they done that yet? Um, th I don't know if this is the first appearance of this enemy or we got him prior, but we have the black. They call him the all new Black Tarantula. Okay, so good look out there. Chasm, Cursed of Cain, four of four. Why does this book exist? Spider Society 4 out of 4. Spectacular Spider-Man 9. Men, two people in one. Spider-Man Black Suit and Blood 4 of 4 as it winds down. We got a lot of Marvel books on their way out, Drew. A lot yes. of stuff just heading towards the exit. So curious, good. curious, curious. Good, good, good. My boy Slot writing Spider-Boy 13. And, of course, we have the secret origin of Spider-Girl because we couldn't just have one can you imagine walking into your of these. you walk into your your LCS to the Marvel section mm -hmm. and it's just 50 Venom books, Venomore books, 50 different spider variation books, mm -hmm. a bunch of X books, mm -hmm. and that's it, right? Yeah. Yeah. You know? Ah, so weird, so heavy, so heavy. Avengers Assemble 3 of 5, Avengers 20, Marvel Zombies Dawn of Decay 3 of 4, Phases of the Moon Knight 4 of 4, that Fabian Nikeza. Don't you know? You, you tell me though. Fabian Nikeza. I, I think that's pretty good. I Gosh. think that sounds spot on. And Tom Waltz writing that one. Now I'm just kind of leaning into how bad I am at this. That sounds Italian. <laughs> 
<laughs> but we are Nisa Eza. Yeah, that sounds good. Moyes says Hidalgo. Spirits of Engines 3, Deadpool team up 4 of 5. Major X returns as Major Pain for Deadpool. Deadpool 8. All right, this is the daughter. It ain't easy being dead. Cool. Ellie Camacho, the mini merc with a mouth, Ren- regenerating teen degenerate. Okay. Uh, that should be fun to see. I do like the Derek Chu ver- ver- ugh, variant. It is cool, cool, cool. She wasn't in the movie, was she? No. Not at all. Captain America 5 by your boy Straczynski. Immortal Thor, Al Ewing, issue 17, Scarlet Witch 6, Daredevil 15, Saladin Ahmed writing that. I used to love Kingpin versus Daredevil books. Mm-hmm. I, I used to love them. I used to seek them out. And uh, when Kingpin was against Spider-Man, I used to love those too. So anytime yeah. Kingpin was on a book, I was like, oh, man, I got to get that. He's cool. It's appointment television. Yeah. Blood Hunters 4 of 5, Conquest 2099 3 of 5, Ahsoka 5, which we know is a retread, don't buy it. Star Wars Battles of Jakku Insurgency Rising 4, I believe that's a retread as well. Insurgency Rise, I'm sorry, Star Wars Battle of Jakku Republic Under Siege 1. Still reeling from the events of Insurgency Rises, Luke must seek out a relic that could hold clues to the future of the Jedi Order. Maybe this stuff's real. I'll have to check it out. So, the, so okay, so, so Insurgency Rising is the last of the last of that series, and it, it it's not finish. telling me that, but we're inferring that from the fact that we're branching off. You can't have two Star Wars battles of Jakku that are slightly different, can you? I, I mean, I guess you can. Yeah. And we might get a new Inquisitor in this fourth issue, so we might want to keep an eye on that. Yeah. All right. You do you, Marvel. <laughs> Ewoks 2 by Steve Orlando. Ooh, Ewoks hanging out with some uh, bounty hunters there. The battle on Endor continues. Oh, Maybe I like it. Wicked. I'm probably going to read that Ewoks. Just Heck to yeah. see. Uncle Scrooge in the Infinity Iron hardcover. All right. This is where I kick to my brother for hardcover and trade news. I, I I know you do that, but I mean, what do you want me to do? What do you want me to do exactly with with hardcovers of collected I mean, books I'm that I just wrap up the Marvel thing unless you tell me something that i need to look at cause... all right well give me two seconds to flip through because i can't not look at them all i do like this marvel studios deadpool and wolverine exposed photos from the set hardcover so um, okay sixty dollars you could look you at go. still photos from a moving movie that you may have seen and if you go to page 84 buy this marvel masterworks of the west coast avengers and don't buy the new <laughs> west coast avengers that's out <laughs> This is much better. <laughs> this is real. And it's also they're also collecting Vision and Scarlet Witch, the twelve issue maxi series, which uh, was classic, really great. That's one that we put together in a quarter bin a couple of times. Mm-hmm. The Vision that that Vision and Scarlet Witch series. Yeah, I sold a few of those. Sold a few of those, man. Those those I cleaned up with that back in the day. All that trade bait paperback for uh, Get Fury is going to be out. Yeah, that'll be great. Yeah, oh, a Doom collection is going to do really well. Mm-hmm. That Doom Treasury edition. I wonder what it's collecting. Um, Doom. Doom number one from 2024. Oh, the 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 one shot that just came out. Mm-hmm. Uh, Fantastic Four 583. And Runaways number one. Just collecting three issues? What the Jeez. hell is this? That doesn't make sense. <laughs> that can't be right. It's 160 pages. And I guess that one shot was pretty long. Yeah. All right. Yeah. One, two, and three. But yeah. Interesting. Yeah. I guess that. I don't see how that adds up to 160 pages, but maybe. Marvel math, baby. Marvel math. Yeah. Yeah. We never understood their legacy counting any either. So. Uh, Blood Hunt is collected. No, it's just the X Men Blood Hunt. 
the, the, the blood hunt that, that that's the blood hunt proper i think mm-hmm. maybe i don't know i can't tell it must Pick have already your- collected Captain America Saga of Sand and Wilson trade paperback just in time for the movie. Yeah. Are you, are you uh, are we going to the theaters for that? Yep. We are. Yep. When is it coming out in 2025? Yeah, 2025. Because there's nothing left this year. Correct. All we had was Deadpool. Yep. Is Joker coming out in the theaters this couple months? Yes, I think so. I think it's coming out this year. It's getting some early buzz. People are excited about it. There we go. And some posters for sale. And I think that's that's I think that's it. Now they just put uh, something on the back cover and something on the front cover. No, no ads. Joker two, Folly Ado, October fourth. Okay, very cool. Now it's time for our good friends at Cover Price for their yeah. top 10. Head over to cover, cover Price and look at some more things on the secondary market. Starting where we love to start, the same place we started for the last few weeks, Transformers 11. Thank you, bonus. 71 unit sales, near mint, high sale of $95. Rawls, most commonly sold for $77. We talked about it. Unbelievable Gwenpool, 25 units sold, 67 bucks. 13 for Rawls with a high of 95 for 69.8. We've got some more stuff about Muse for Daredevil as Daredevil 11 continues to sell good. Another 19 copies selling $202 for CG 9.8, 50 bucks for Rawls. One of my favorite scenes in the new Deadpool movie is where we're bouncing back and forth to different Wolverines and different timelines. And we stop at this crucifixion uh, of Wolverine on a bed of skulls. That has really lit fire under this uh, Uncanny X-Men 251 book. Raw's going for 31 bucks. CGC 9.8 for 31584 copies sold. Wow. Moving. And X-Men Origins Gambit, number one potential sport. It, it took nearly 20 years for a definitive origin of Gambit to appear in comics, but here we are. Nine copies selling, slabs 9.6 going for 100 bucks, Rawls for 40. Infamous yeah. Iron Man number one, RDJ, Doom, Doom, RDJ. 54 copies in the secondary market, CGC 9.8 is 241, Rawls for 50 bucks. This is just sitting in a box behind me. I looked at it yesterday. Why is it not on the internet? Boy, have I listened. <laughs> Doom number one, Sanford Green, cover A, another 17 moving, Rawls, 44 bucks, CDC 9.8, already coming back for 150. Blood Hunt 5 by Kale New, 1 in 25, 14 units selling, no slabs available, but Rawls going for 54 bucks. Drew, we talked about Image and the Power Fantasy number one, The ch- this is The Chase. Now, a lot of people didn't know it was the chase, but now know it's the chase. We're talking about the chase. 17 they, copies. They figured it out. 12 bucks. Something is killing the children, number one. Boom, boom, boom. CGC 9.8, 768 bucks. 11, 11. copies selling. 11. 446. So good. Uh, I sold 13 more uh, Daredevil number 14s in uh, at rank 11. So... 101 for a CGC 9.8 and $27 for Rawls. And this is also Muse, so that's why that's hot. The Uncanny X-Men number one, the Jim Lee Hidden Gem 1 in 50. Selling for double ratio. 100 bucks, 27 of them moving. Uh, Werewolf by Night, Red Band number one, the Jeff DeCal. 15 of these move in. This came in at rank 13 with a 112 near mint raw sale. Good for you. Uh, we're going to take another look at that X-Men 2, J. Scott Campbell, Virgin, 1 in 100. They're saying 160 for a near mint, but most of them are around 110. And 19 of them moved. At rank 15, we have, what if Iron Man, Demon in the Armor, in an armor, number one. 10 of these moved. 112 bucks for a near mint was the high most of them are around 100 bucks 
And this is what they think the story is going to be in 2026, whenever they get around to the Doom. This is the one I would be banking around. I like this book. I'm, I can't imagine they're going to put, they're going to do a whole movie around a what if. I just can't, I can't see it happening. So yeah, I was right, up, I was right this, about it gives, us, it gives us everything we want. I was right about Dead, um, Dazzler not being in. How long do you hang your head on not, something not happening? Um, I mean, I called it. I called it like I sees it. The sun even shines on a dog's ass someday. <laughs> At rank 16, we have Deadpool 31. 16 of these moving. High sale of 28 bucks. And this is the first full appearance of Deadpool's daughter. Olega Macho. Uh, New Mutants 98, um, Buddy Work uh, used to read uh, New Mutants off the off the rack, and he stopped at 95 or 92, whatever. <laughs> he missed both the first appearance of Cable and the first appearance of uh, Deadpool. That's very so, great. Bummer. 9.55 for CGC 98. Raw's going for 3.33. Was this not a two thousand dollar book during the pandemic? Yep, I thought it was. I thought it had got that high. It did. At rank eighteen, we have that Secret Wars number ten, um, two eighty five for nine eight. Twenty three of these move in. Raw's going for around thirty bucks. Oh, I gotta pull these out. So like, I have everything but eight. Should I just right. sell everything but eight? In you should sell everything lot? but eight. Everything. Or but should eight. I sell them individually? Um, I'd be. Uh, I think I'd pull out the Doom and sell it by itself. But like they all at one point were spiking. Yeah, and then sell the rest as a lot. Because it's hot. Because Doom is hot now, all by himself. So I'd sell that one. All the Secret Wars are hot because we continue to do. Or I mean, we're leading up to a Secret Wars still. But since you don't have a lot anyway, I don't have have a full lot because that's stupid number eight. So spin off the 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 Doom by itself, and then sell the rest of them in a lot. But you won't do it either because you're lazy. I hate you for pointing out the truth. Aaron <laughs> rank 20. We've got the missing one that you're just talking about. Secret Wars hey. number eight. This is a $500 nine eight book. Oh. These moved. Rawls for one fifty. Craig. Wah, wah. Drew, without any ado, Drew, we are heading into the reason people are tuning in. What is the big thing we want to talk about? The sneak peek at next week. What books are we going to have to head to our local comic book shops with a stack of 20s and say, you know what? Put those aside for me. I got to have those. Those are going to be the new something that's killing the children in the next New Mutants 98. Let's start with our good friends at Penguin Random House. We're heading to Lunar Distributions. I'm not even going to talk about the 15 books. I'm, I'm sorry, six books. Available on Tuesday because they're just collected. The trades. They're just trades. We're going straight to the 28th and we're talking about what DC and Lunar are distributing that day. And we're starting with Absolute Power Origins 2 of 3. Lots of Absolute Power spinoffs. Lots of cool covers for these. But I am Dan Moore foil for Absolute Power Task Force 7 is actually kind of cool. Yeah. And then, of course, um, the facsimile for good old Neil Adams. Muhammad Ali versus, yeah. yeah. Guess how much? It's like a 15 bucks, wasn't it? Yeah, $15. Yeah, 15 bucks. And I don't know why you would... Um, why you I don't would know why you'd buy the blank now that Neil Adams is dead. Yeah, I don't know why. I guess so think somebody could recreate it for you on there. I yeah. don't know. Nuts. Barbaric versus Death Stalkers. They've got a cool little homage to Wolverine and Hulk 181, but other than that, I care less. Yeah. Uh, the penultimate Batman Dark Edge or Dark Age with our boy Michael Red. Is he our boy now? Nope, not a big fan. Yeah, not a big fan, are you? Cult of the Lamb, three of four. Detective. Hits its 1088. Uh, still, still Rom B. I mean, you just hate me. You just hate me at this point. Flash 12, 
some actual neat flash covers. Great, great flash covers. Yeah, the Raphael, Raphael Grassetti cover is kind of cool. I like uh-huh. the the cardstock uh, action figure variant, and I like the swimsuit cardstock of him walking, running on the water. That is pretty cool. Yeah. Also like Gotham City Sirens four with we still have Jackpot running around. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, who knew? Yeah. Kyle, my, one of my favorite new books is Grommets. Yeah, the skateboarding book. And it's uh, on its um, fourth of seven. Mm-hmm. Really fun, enjoyable. Rick Remender and Brian Posehn. Yeah. These are, this is not me as a kid. Um, I don't really uh, connect with them at all, but it's still really fun read. Yeah, and the one in tens have done phenomenally well on those. So if you're finding one in yeah. tens, I recommend you just snag them up. Snag them up. Philadelphia 35. Ooh, the second issue of Nice House by the Sea. Looking forward to reading that one. I love that cover C with just a beautiful beachscape and then a dog chilling next to a dead body. (laughs) Like they do. Uh, Saga's coming back with 68. Yeah, baby. It came back first from hiatus with 67 which was pretty good um good enough that it is a being offered a second print good enough that it's being offered a second print and um i don't know man i don't know i don't know I still holding said, saga or should i be selling saga i think you i, I think i don't think it's ever going to get any better than it is i think we're in a walking dead situation where Oof. it's stuck around too long and lost losing people and I mean, I don't know that because we don't have sales numbers anymore. Um, I just don't think it's as good as it used to be. And I loved, loved, loved Saga. Yeah. Yeah. Transformers number one, 40th anniversary edition, one shot, Bill Sienkiewicz cover. This is the first cover I fell in love with. For sure. Yeah. This Transformers cover from the early 1980s. I think it was 1980. I think the cover's as old as I am. Okay. 40 years. I'm 43. So it came out a few years after I was born. Yeah, I adore this cover. I have two copies of this. I love, love, love them. One of them this is my is cover, awesome. my comic, but that's okay. They're all your comics. I couldn't buy things at three years old, so I stole <laughs> everything from you. Um, I like that for the anniversary, we have a Christian Ward Megatron version. But, Very cool. Um, it's a bastardization, and I will not allow yeah. it. No, got to keep, got to get the original, the OG, yeah. if you will. Yeah. Yeah. Great, Void great Rival. cover. Yeah. Void Rivals 12. And since uh, Steamboat Willie is now eminent domain or Common Core or whatever the hell you call it when something becomes available for everybody. I think it's public domain. Thank Comic you, Core. Paul. Comic Core is math, right? Is a, is a math thing? Sure. Wife's the teacher, not me, homie. <laughs> but we get some Disney books running around. Over at it- our good friends at, uh, are, are you over at uh, previews yet? Or are you still doing No, because I'm looking oh. at this Zatanna Bring Down the House number three. Our, our girl, Tula Lote, who does all kinds of sexy things, putting a really nice cover out for that. Yeah. That I like. Now I'm heading over to our good friends at Previews World, popping that image tab, looking at grommets again, and anything else I might have missed. Image first bundles of Bitch Planet and Black Science and all the I things get. that make me go, ah, oh, remember yeah. what that image was. Great, great year. Bitch Planet was one of my favorites. Black Science was great. Now, but this bundle of 20, I wonder how much they pay for a bundle of 20. And do they still sell this for a dollar? Because the yeah, Image First aren't a dollar. I'm not really happy. <laughs> not image First should be a dollar, right? I would imagine so. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Just, oh, look. There's first East of West and Farmhand and Fear Fear Agent. Oh man, those were the days. <laughs> great stuff. So much great stuff. Now trees. I don't know about that one, but heading down to Boom Studios, looking at Berserker, the Lost Book of B, number one. This is of course the Keanu Reeves vehicle that just won't stop. Ah uh, yeah, these are we ten dollars have... a piece. Not sure why that. Needs to be that expensive. Hello Darkness gets a third printing, two third printings, maybe three. Yeah, two two third printings yeah. of its uh, first issue. 
in a second. And a beautiful Paolo Riveras issue two cover. Yeah, it's very nice. Once and future pen and inks. Dan Mora pen and inks are always cool. I've been on that once and future train since day one. Something, Something is killing this. Four? 40. 40. 40, yeah. And we're, we were just talking about number one being so hot. Now on issue 40. Way to go. Speaking of so hot, I jumped down to Titan and I see Gun Honey. And Honey will not quit. Another new Gun Honey? Oh, Another that's a new Gun Honey. That's a holy moly. Collision holy moly. Yeah. Dead by Daylight, trade paperback. Uh, this is, of course, the uh, game where you can be a serial killer or be a survivor and get away from a serial killer. More choice. Nice. Down in our Marvel books, we start with Aliens versus Avengers. We won't get into why this is a stupid book. <laughs> Joel Jones doing a Disco Dazzler cover for Amazing Spider-Man 56. This would have been so great if she had been in the movie. Yeah. Alas. I wonder if, like, the Marvel people didn't know who was going to be in the movie. Like, <laughs> they just had to, like, guess. Deadpool team up number one. I like the Coca-Cola variant. <laughs> Product placement is finest, but I'm okay with it. Yeah, that's weird. That's a weird mashup. Are they going to do product placements in other th- months as well? Maybe. I mean, I'm waiting for the Doritos variant. <laughs> that would be funny. Phases of the Moon Knight gets its first issue. Who's doing this one? Oh, this is Ben Piercy. I think he had he had a run in one of the Moon Knight series, didn't he? Ben Pert Piercy? Does sure. that sound right? Sure. I don't remember. Oh, NYX number two. Derek Chu is a nice version of my girl, Laura Kenny. I like it. Phases of the Moon Knight number one, Drew. This is where you're kicking off your thing. And boy, Derek True came to play on you as well. Yeah, he is good. He is he's he is doing good work, man. Very and solid. you even get a Rod Rice design variant. Yeah, it's pretty solid. So I'm, I'm down. Spider Gwen Gwen Go Spider Four, Ahsoka Two, Ultimate X Men Six. Animore Zomboids one. Vent X Men three. J Scott Campbell with a gorgeous road cover. Cover love it. Gosh, that's so cool. not to one in one hundred, right? No. Unfortunately, beating out your girl Joelle Jones, but still, good, good work. Heading down to our good friends at Dynamite. You know, mostly overpriced gargoyles, Johnny Quest, and Darkwing Duck variants. Best of luck in Dynamite. Down into our smaller publishers where we look at things. I'm at I Lie Popeye number one, the cover D um, from Massive. That is a punch out or super punch out uh, homage. Here we go. I like it. I um, lie, Popeye. We talk about Keen Spot being you know, kind of the kitschy books. Um, Can I Scream, number one, going to a second print for a couple variants on Can I Scream. So that's cool. A little bit of success there with that one. Yeah, good for them. Yeah. I do like that I lie, Popeye. Uh, SHP Comics. Uh, does a something called a killing machine number one um i'm not sure shp but it's um eh, i mean the art's not great but maybe the story's good yeah life number one from this distillery comics which of course does the the sideways flip books yeah not a fan are you 
No. I mean, yeah. I'm just old. Yeah, I mean, I'm old school too. I don't, I don't, it, it doesn't work. I, I'm glad they've tried it a couple of times yeah. and just, it's never, never really caught on. From Mad Cave, we have Praise Gods, Raise, Raise the Devil, Shane Connery Volk, created by the artist of Nottingham. Praise oh. God is a Twilight Zone meets Sim City. That's a good mix. Yeah. Odina, number one. Omni Strike. This is a concrete comic. Um, I, I, I don't want to read it. You doing <laughs> the new enough. Resident Alien books? Resident oh, Alien man. Book of Life. I never, I never played the game. I own them. I just have never played them. For Resident Alien? Nope, never played a Resident Alien. No, this is a book that you like, Resident Alien from Dark Horse. Oh, okay, okay. I'm, what am I thinking of? Resident Evil. Jesus. Yes. Yes. Wow. Oh, that yeah, sneak snuck up on me. That's the third one. Yeah, I'll be there for sure. First two are good. I couldn't remember when. The, I was gonna say I couldn't remember if the first one out or first two are out. Yeah, first two were good. I've read both of those. Star Runner Hidden Star number one from Atlantis Studios. An interesting looking book. Actually, I'm sorry. Number one, two, three, and four all available at the same time. That doesn't seem right. Not a fan. Does that does that seem right? Does not seem right. Yeah, I don't I don't get it. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Black, White, and Green, issue four. Some really cool Pat Gleason covers on those. And that is all she wrote. Yeah. An interesting week, Drew. Uh, interesting week. A W E A K. <laughs> Not much to choose from. I'm going to have to go with Phases of the Moon Knight number one. Yeah. And uh, bye bye boy Ben Ben Percy. What cover are we doing? Oh man, uh, I was gonna do A. Should I do something else? Well, I was I was looking at NYX number two, Derek Chu, and I was wondering if you were doing Phases of the Moon Knight, Derek Chu, and we do a Derek Chu twofer. Oh, wait, okay. Let me get back up there now. Let me get back up to the top. What's it look like? Black. It's <laughs> just a black cover. No, but it's the dark suit. Phases of the Moon Knight. Oh, Derek Chu. Yeah, I can do that. All right, I and I will do easily NYX swing. number two, Derek Chu Wolverine variant. We're going to go a twofer for Marvel and a twofer for Wolverine. We went through the previews for Marvel. It's very rare that my brother and I are Marvel-esque, and we're, we're rocking it today. Yeah, love it. Very cool. With a, a special shout-out to J. Scott Campbell for his Rogue variant on X-Men 3. Good stuff. Hey, well, thank you guys for tagging along with Drew and myself as we venture through all the things coming out in your local comic book shops this coming Wednesday as we get back into all the fun filled things in the world of comics. If you want more from Kyle and Drew, head on over to patreon.com, toss a couple bucks our way, get unedited early content from us, behind the scenes content, conversations from us. Um, really help us out, be part of our community, help fund the things that we love to do here. Also, the YouTube's Comics for Fun and Profit. Um, throw us a subscription, doesn't cost you anything, pushes the numbers up a little bit, and hopefully one day helps us get uh, a little bit of monetization for Drew's um, post-death plan to memorialize <laughs> all that he does for free. So be part of that. So we thank you so much for tagging along with Drew and me. So for Drew and for myself, see you. As you know, our LCS is Cowabunga Comics, Lake Country, Wisconsin's best pop culture destination for new comics, back issues, gaming, retro video games, vinyl, and figures. Give them a call, 262-569-9999. Check them out online at cowabungacomics.com or follow them on Twitter at Incredicow. Uh, they are our LCS... And we utilize their deep discount mail order service to bring Oconomowoc, Wisconsin, closer to us. They'll take care of you. Tell them Drew and Kyle sent you. Say hi to Eric and James from us.
If you need an LCS, you can't go wrong with Cowabunga Comics.